So I'm uh, with here with Rebecca McKinnon, internet expert, former CNN bureau chief in Beijing, to talk about what reporters going to cover the Olympics need to know. Rebecca, what, what do they need to know? Hi there, Thomas. Well, first of all, there is internet censorship in China. It may be lifted a little bit in the uh, Olympic venues and so on, but you're not going to be very sure exactly what you're going to find until you get there. So before you go, make sure you have a virtual private network set up, a VPN. Ytopia is one that works well, or your company might have a VPN. Make sure you know how to use it. Uh, or you can use something like Tor or Siphon to get around the internet blocks, so you have some way of accessing sites that might be blocked. You also need to be thinking about your data security. So uh, if you are trying to work on sensitive stories that may be beyond topic that perhaps uh, uh, the Chinese government might not be so happy about you reporting. Uh, if you're communicating with sources who might be under surveillance, you need to make sure that you're using secure email and that you're using a secure internet connection. Uh, so uh, you don't want to be conducting sensitive interviews over uh, MSN uh, instant messaging, for instance. So they've cracked MSN. You, well, yeah, you, basically most chat and most email is not secure. And now, when using Gmail, is there any way to make Gmail secure? Yeah, with Gmail, if you do HTTPS at the top. That's in the URL at the in top? In the URL at the top. That will make your So you add an S secure. after that HTTP. Yeah, but however, it depends on the recipient. If the recipient is not using secure email, then their then the email could be intercepted on their end. So it also depends on whether they're using a secure communication. Um, so if you really want to be secure, actually, uh, you, you minimize your substantive communications electronically and you try and have them in person with people. Uh, but the, the other point in China is that as a foreign journalist, you're not going to be in that much physical danger. The worst thing that can happen to you is that you get kicked out of the country if, if you do something that that uh, the authorities don't like. The thing you need to be concerned most about is your sources. You know, are you going to be getting other people in trouble? Actually, one of the things I'm more concerned about than uh, than reporters' ability to to communicate uh, technically is are people going to misquote their Chinese sources and get their Chinese sources in trouble and and then leave. So the danger is and more so, for the the fixers so and, the, and the, the sources. The danger is is for the fixers and the sources and and really think when you're doing a story, you know, how is this going to impact the person I'm interviewing? Uh, what are the implications of being involved with this story for my fixer? Um, yeah, for the people who are helping me, and 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 really think about the entire context of what you're doing. Okay, so VPN to get out of China, mm -hmm. secure your email, That's take right. care of your sources. What what about your data? Should you be scrambling your data on your laptop? Well, this is an issue. If you leave your your laptop and it's and it's not secured, and you leave it in your hotel and you go out, um, there are plenty of stories of people who've. Uh, either discovered or not really realized that uh, that their data was compromised. Somebody had gone in and copied their hard drive or somebody put some spyware or uh, keylogger on their on their computer so that even if they did have secure email, somebody was uh, logging their communications. So uh, there are definitely people who are supremely paranoid, keep their laptops with them at all times. Uh, or might store sensitive data on a USB key they keep with them and they don't keep it on their hard drive. So, so these, are, these are all issues to think about. Now, you know, again, it, it's, it's a matter of convenience versus paranoia. If you want to be 100% secure, you have to go to extremely extreme lengths. Um, however, you know, you need, you need to think about specific situations and what are the consequences of certain information being, being compromised in certain situations and, and then act accordingly. And just again, think about the implications not only for your story, but more importantly for the human beings involved. 
but you know I think uh, with the Olympics generally I doubt we're not I doubt we're gonna see too much dissident activity I think most people are going to be lying very low uh, I think there may be a lot of visitors to China uh, roaming around looking for a story um, and, uh, and and that's that's actually a, a concern as well and I've I've actually to be honest I've told many of my Chinese friends um, avoid the visiting journalists because parachute um, journalists are bad news well you know I, you know, I have friends who are parachute journalists. I'm not, not going to say that they're always bad all the time, um, but there's a lot of risk to talking to journalists during the Olympics. And for, for many, um, many people I know, it's, it's probably not worth it and that they might be better off lying low and or, or only choosing to talk to people who have a deeper knowledge of China so that those people can make a judgment uh, about the context in which this person is talking and not quote them accidentally out of context or misunderstand what they said and uh, then accidentally get that person in trouble. Okay, in terms of judging how much precaution people need to take, do you yourself scramble the data on your hard drive? Do you carry that's around a, a USB that's key? That's a good question. Um, yeah, I mean, I, uh, it, it again sort of depends on what you've got on your hard drive. I, I would say that uh, when, when I'm traveling, you know, I, I try to keep, you know, my sensitive stuff. I, I mean, I don't have a lot of sensitive stuff um, these days, but, uh, you know, if, if there was, if there were communications uh, in, in my email and so on that, uh, that, I, that I, you know, didn't feel like sharing around, um, I, I would certainly store my data on a drive that I leave at home and, and, and don't take traveling. Uh, but yeah, you, you definitely, I'm probably not as, as careful as I could be. Very few people are as careful as they could be. Um, but you, you, you need to keep in mind, particularly if you're in the middle of working on something that's sensitive, um, you know, what, what are the, the points at which there could be problems. Okay, so what are the, what are the actual programs or things that people can use to, to mm -hmm. a VPN, you yeah, mentioned? Yeah, virtual private network. Okay. You know, that's, that's the... Uh, is there a particular one or um, just there well, are many of them? Well, there's Ytopia, which Ytopia, is one that okay. people, many people use. Uh, to um, safe, the safe email, mm -hmm. there's a program? Well, there's, there's a number, there's kind of different levels of email encryption that you can get into. To depending on how technic technically uh, savvy you are. Um, the easiest way is HTTPS with Gmail. Okay. Um, there's a tool called Vaultlet Soft that uh, a number of people recommend I have not used at this point. Um, there uh, is also uh, something called PGP, Pretty Good pretty Privacy, good privacy. Okay. which uh, gets a little bit geekier where you're kind of using keys uh, for your email. There are guides um, that can teach you how to use these things. There's, there's an organization called Frontline Defenders. Uh, if you go to Google, I don't have their URL off the top of my head. Um, they have a very good guide uh, for um, uh, internet and computer security and privacy issues with, with basically toolboxes and toolkits that will point you to a, a large number of resources that you can use um, depending on the situation you're in. Okay, excellent. And otherwise, people can enjoy uh, using Wikipedia before they get to China. Yeah, well, you can use it while you're in China. Just use Tor or, or a VPN or you know in any number of tools to to circumvent the censorship. But y you do want to get it figured out a little bit before you go, because once you get there, if you haven't been thinking about it at all, it becomes a little harder to set up. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much. You're welcome.